you see. Oh Lord, through the eyes of death, a hopeless case, a hopeless case, an empty space. Father, we say thank you this morning for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Thank you, O oh God, for the week that has gone by. Thank you, O oh God, that we can come together like this as a band of your people, not to see one another, although that is wonderful, but we came to meet with you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Thank you, O oh God, for your hand of protection. Thank you, O oh God, for the angel of the Lord that always go ahead of us. We appreciate you, O oh God, for your hand of mercy and protection during this hard time. But your hand of mercy and blessing has always been upon us. We want to say thank you, O oh God, for the message that you have sent in our day. Thank you for Malachi 4. Thank you for the plan of redemption. Thank you, O oh God, that we have seen our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we know, O oh God, that there is no rubbing compound that can rub out our names from the Lamb's Book of Life. We glorify you today. We lift your holy name on high. For there is none like you and there will never be. We appreciate you. We honor you. We thank you for who you are and what you made us to be. Father God, I believe that this meeting has a great potential to be the greatest meeting that has ever been on the face of the earth, O oh God. May you move from bench to bench until, O oh God, the Holy Spirit itself can freak our hearts, O oh God. And we be like those brothers coming from Emmaus, saying, did not our hearts burn within us as he spoke to us along the way. We glorify you. We honor you. We lift your holy name on high. In Jesus' name. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Just a few visitors that are in our gaze. Uh, we have got Brother Becky. Uh, where is Brother Becky? Oh, he stepped outside. Okay. Uh, sister Pauline, she's there at the back. Can you raise your hand, my sister? Praise. Let's give her a round of applause. Amen. Now, that sister i visited her um when was it last week saturday and uh, she's staying there in pretoria capital park and i uh, got the details uh, from a brother in uk to say that she wants to know more about the word the lord willing will be baptizing her the next month when the cold front is over yeah. let's give the lord a hand of praise <laughs> and uh, we have got brother brother creation brother creation just raise your hand that is the brother there Amen. He wants to be baptized as well. And uh, we are going to baptize him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, he wanted to be baptized last Sunday at night. Unfortunately, we did not have the water, but he was ready to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, we have got Brother Joshua Jelly. Brother Joshua, can you raise your hand? Amen. Let's welcome him. 
is Brother Joshua Jelly. His father is a pastor in Zimbabwe, Bay Bridge. That's where I usually preach my August meetings. So may the Lord richly bless you, Brother uh, Joshua. Sister Nondumi, so she's there at the back. Let's give her a round of applause. Praise the name of the Lord. And then, uh, Elder Mbele, we welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's give Brother Mbele a round of applause. Amen. I saw Brother Donald and the family coming in. Where are they? Or oh, they at the back. Let's give them a round of applause. Amen. Oh, Brother Becky is here. Let's give him a round of applause. Amen. So, just a few announcements. Sister Grace is not with us this morning. She's at work. And um, Sister... Sorry? Oh, Brother Alex. Brother Alex. Let's give... Brother Alex, just raise your hand, my brother. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Sister Paulina McPherson, she's uh, in Cape Town to see the mother. Actually, she's on her way back now. Brother Ezra will sleep out in a short while to go and fetch her at the airport. And um, the mother was not doing well, but we prayed for the mother. And uh, she's now doing very well. And uh, Pastor Steve Francis, as we announced that he went to be with the Lord, the burial will be this coming Saturday. Let's just remember the family in prayer. And uh, Brother Happy Nyalungu was supposed to be with us here, uh, as promised, but he had to go to KZN. So Brother Happy will be with us maybe in a week or two. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And now I want to wish the July um, uh, babies some happy birthday. Some of them were not, they were not around. We did not. Uh, Sister Kinelwe uh, and Sister Gugu, we want to wish you a blessed happy birthday, a belated birthday. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, I want to say to Sister Kinelo and Sister Gugu that let your blessing be above those of your progenitors. Praise the name of the Lord. And then who's, who's born in July again? Maybe. I, oh, Brother Alex. When, when is your date? Oh, okay. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Amen. So if you feel like giving Brother, I mean, Sister Gugu and Sister Kinelo some gifts, they are still welcome. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So, uh, just a reminder, I want to say that um, our service believers starts at 10 o'clock, not half past 10. 10 o'clock, we should all be here and be seated as according to uh, church order. I believe that we'll do that uh, properly next week Sunday. Give yourselves a round of applause. Amen. Let us just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we say thank you today for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We want to remember Sister Paulina that she's flying back from Cape Town. May the angel of the Lord be with her, O oh God. Father, I pray for Brother Happy Nyalungu in KZN doing some outreach work. Father God, may you be with them at this time. Maybe the last one, Father God, is down in KZN. We don't know. But Father God, may you give our brothers courage right there. Father God, as they are doing the work of the Lord, I pray, O oh God, for Brother Steve Francis' family, O oh God, that during this time of bereavement, Father, that the elder that has been with us for many years and standing in the gap, and Father God, preaching this message with all his heart, is going to be with the Lord. We want to pray for the family. May you be their balm in Gilead at this time. May you comfort them where no man can comfort. Father God, we want to pray for our visitors that are visiting us today. May, Father God, may they leave this place with a song in their hearts that indeed it was good to be in the house of the Lord. I pray, O oh God, for this, Father God, the ones that have been celebrating their birthdays, Sister Gugu, Sister Kinelo, and our precious brother Alex, may your hand of mercy and blessing continue to be upon them, O oh God. May it be a start of another season, O oh God. Bless them abundantly. May whatever they touch, let it prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to even, uh, Father God, bring a thankful heart here, Brother Munyarazi, that has been to Zimbabwe. Father God, he wants to say thank you to you that you've taken him safely back on the wings of an eagle. We commit everything into your hands today. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> now, if you have your Bibles with you, let's turn to the word of God. In the book of Malachi chapter 4. And uh, we're going to read verse uh, 5 and 6. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Amen. I believe you are seated next to the right person. 
that you are not go- that is not going to disturb you from saying amen. amen. So if you are seated next to the wrong person, maybe you must move away now. Amen. Before the service gets into full swing. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Praise God. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Mighty God in eternal heavenly Father, we are coming to the most sacred part of the service where no man can enter but you alone can do it for us. Lord, Father God, we have read what we believe to be your word. We know it is easy for every human being to turn the pages of the Bible, but it takes the Holy Spirit himself to turn the pages of our hearts. May you speak through me and hear through your children that at the end of the service, the glory, the honor will come back to you. We commit everything into your hands today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may enjoy the comforts of your seat. Amen. And uh, it wouldn't offend me if you sometimes stand on your feet and say amen. Amen. I will like that. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, my subject this morning is the turning of the hearts the turning of the hearts now we have read in the book of malachi chapter 4 now this is a profound and significant scripture for us as message believers now without this scripture of malachi 4 there is no message for us with this scripture we have a message that god has sent in this generation And we are not identified with the message of Malachi 4 because we have done something greater. We are not in this message because we have got master's degree. You are not in this message because you have got a PhD or you are an an academic. But we are in this message by grace and grace alone. Church of the living God, I want you to get this right at the beginning of the service that we are highly favored of God. And let me say, favor is not fair. Because God had bypassed many good people, but God came to you. Glory to his name. Because we have to understand that you never loved God, but he loved you first. That's why the songwriter says, I love him because he first loved me. You never chose God, but God chose you. Your choice on earth earth was within a choice. Praise the name of the Lord. But now this scripture of Malachi 4 clearly tells us that Malachi 4 becomes a blessing before the case. So accepting Malachi 4 becomes a blessing to you. And rejecting Malachi 4 becomes a curse to you. And let me declare to you quickly that you cannot separate the message from the messenger. Because the message and the messenger becomes one. You cannot accept Paul and reject the message of Paul. You cannot accept the testament and reject the testator. Because the testament and the testator becomes one. You cannot reject healing and and, uh, accept the healer. The healing and the healer becomes one. The messenger and the message becomes one. Glory to his name. Now we must understand that Malachi 4 fulfilled Zechariah 14, 7, fulfilled uh, Luke 17, 30, fulfilled Revelation 10. Malachi 4 fulfilled the role of Zerubbabel. He fulfilled the role of Eliza. He fulfilled the role of Elijah. So if a man occupy those kind of offices, you cannot elbow him out like that. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to say to you, I'm not ashamed to say that man of Malachi 4 is William Marion Brenham. Praise the name of the Lord. I am not ashamed to declare any time, any way that this messenger of Malachi 4 is William Marion Brenham. And notice in the 20th century, Brother Sipo, there were great men like Calvin Knox and John Smith and William Tyndale and Moody and Finney. But all those men, regardless of how great they are, they could not fulfill the description of Malachi 4. And the prophet comes and tells us what is the purpose of this scripture of Malachi 4. Quote number one, the prophet of God says in the message, the super sign. Now notice, so the scripture is strictly interpreted by itself. Notice, he shall turn his first coming, the heart of the fathers to the children. Talking about the old patriarch fathers and turning their faith to this new children's faith of uh, of Jesus being coming before him. I'm coming before Jesus. The Messiah is coming, turning their hearts away from the Lord to this. And in his second coming, he will turn the hearts 
of the children back to the original Pentecostal fathers again. Now, the purpose of Malachi 4 was not to start a new movement. The purpose of Malachi 4 was not to start a new organization. The purpose of Malachi 4 was to turn the hearts of the children back to the faith of the Pentecostal fathers again. And we know, according to these scriptures, we are the children that the Bible is talking about. So, the purpose of Malachi 4 was to turn our hearts to the original Pentecostal fathers again. And that will mean, if our hearts are not turned to the faith of the original Pentecostal fathers, then the Malachi 4 scripture is not yet fulfilled. So, the purpose is to turn your heart and my heart to be exactly the same as that of Peter. My heart and your heart must be the same as that of Bartholomew. Glory to his name. And I want you to understand that the ministry of Malachi 4 has got four aspects to it. Give me the next slide. Now, Malachi 4 has got four aspects. Stay with me. Let us not move around. I want you to make sure that you get what I'm saying. Malachi 4. Praise the name of the Lord. He was, the first one, he was a messenger rebuking the age. The second one, he was a messenger calling us out. And the third part, he was a restoration messenger. But the last part of his ministry was the messenger revealing Christ. Now, this is now beyond the seventh church age. Because no man in his right mind can unveil himself unless he's in the marriage covenant. So when Brother Branham started with his ministry, he was a messenger rebuking the age. That's why in the start of his ministry, you hear him say, go back into your churches, find yourself a good pastor and stay there. Because he did not have a message as yet. Now, when you, when he has rebuked the age, now he calls you in. When you are called, then he can restore you. Now, when you are restored, then he can reveal himself. Now, we, we are now in the season where Christ has unveiled himself. Yes. Hallelujah. That's why you hear Brother Brenham after 1963. He preaches the message. The unveiling of God. Yes. He comes to the pulpit and says. Let us unveil this Christ. So what does it mean? We have seen his secret part. He has seen our secret parts. We, we are married with no language of divorce. Did you know that God needs you more than you need him? That's a paradox. To a Pentecostal chicken. Praise the name of the living God. So he cannot reveal himself unless you are restored. So brother Brenham was not a reformer. But he was a restoration messenger. So our hearts must be restored. Until my faith and your faith. Is the same as that of Peter. Then I can come to church and say. Receive your healing. Because Peter, when he was at the gate called beautiful, he told the lame man, he said, silver and gold, have I none, but such as I have, I give unto you. Hallelujah. What do I have this morning? I've got a message direct from the throne room of God. You can receive what you want this morning. Amen. Code number two. The prophet of God says that brings to pass Jewel's prophecy saying I will restore all the years that the palma worm and the kenka worm and so forth has eaten. So the scripture of Malachi 4 brother Luke it brings to pass Jewel's prophecy. So what is Jewel's prophecy? Jewel chapter 1 verse 4 that which the palma worm hath left hath the locust eaten and that which the locust has eaten hath the canker worm eaten and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten so notice so here we see four creatures that came which is actually one insect in different stages and these creatures came to destroy the bright tree and when they destroyed the bright tree, God had a promise of restoration according to Joel chapter 2 verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent to you. Now, no matter what the devil has done to you this morning, God has a plan of restoration. And whatever the devil has destroyed, God will restore to you this morning a hundredfold. And according to Webster Dictionary, to restore means to return to the former owner or to bring back to the former estate of condition. That means we can put a reverse order now on anything that the devil has stolen from you. 
it is the law of God that when you have, got, you have lost something, it must come back to you. And if you're not going to believe it, I'm going to believe it on your behalf. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. David one time went to war with men and while they were gone to the enemy, the Amalekites came and took what they had what they had uh, have. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 1. Stay with me here. Let's, let's read together. It came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekite had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small. So they did not kill them. But carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold it was burnt with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Verse 5. And David's two wives were taken captives. Anum and Jezreelite and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite and verse 6 and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of, it, of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man of, for his sons and for his daughters but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God now David was coming back from a campaign brother Branham says when he got back he found that the city the whole city was burned the women were captured by the enemy. The children were captured by the enemy. Their cattle were taken. Their goats were taken. Everything they had was taken by the enemy. And when they saw this, they started to cry. And the Bible says they cried until they had no more power to cry. Now, let me say to you this morning, I'm not talking to everybody this morning. I'm talking to somebody that has, got, that has lost something. I'm talking to somebody that has lost their children. I'm talking to somebody this morning that has lost his finances. I'm talking to somebody here who has lost his job. I'm talking to somebody here who has lost his revival. Who can say, this situation of mine is not right. I don't have what I used to have. But I've got good news this morning. It is possible. Glory to God. So the Amalekites invaded the city, but they did not kill them. So they only captured them. So your situation, your problem is not yet dead. It's only captured. Hallelujah. Your children are not yet dead. They are still alive. Your husband is not yet dead, but he's still alive. You are sick. You are not yet dead. Let me say to you this morning, there is a possibility. There is a possibility. This man cried and cried until they could not cry anymore. Crying does not solve any problem. Let me say that again. Crying does not solve any problem. Brother Branham in the message, why cry speak? He says, God does not need a bunch of crying babies. He needs men with a backbone. They said to David, we have cried. But now we need a plan of action. That's what the scripture says anyway. We need a plan of action. Stop crying. They say to David, if you continue crying, we will stone you. Now let me tell you, if you are going to continue crying here this morning, we are going to stone you. David, we need a plan of action. Verse 7, and David said unto Abiathar the priest, Abimelech, son, I pray thee, bring me hither the airport. And Abiathar brought thither the airport to David. Verse 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt overtake them. And without fail, recover. Oh. I am so glad that a plan of action was taken. Yes, David inquired in the Lord and said, Shall I pursue? Shall I overtake them? And heaven answered to David and said, David, pursue and recover. Oh, glory to God. Let me tell you, brother, sister, you are coming. Your children are coming back. Your job is coming back. Your revival 
is coming back. Your fire is coming back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only thing you need to do is to pursue. Enforce your rights. You have got the legal rights as a believer to overtake it and recover all. This is an operation. Recover all. We are leaving no stone unturned. We are taking everything that the devil has taken from us. Code number three. Therefore we have a right to force these claims upon Satan and say give it back. And he has to do it. Because we can go take God's agent, the Holy Spirit, go right down on our knees and say, it is thus says the Lord. He's got to give it up. That's all because the Holy Spirit is there to make him do it. Quote number four, but the law of the Spirit of God is to force, to force Satan to give up that which he has unrightfully, deceitfully taken from God. Souls of men. He took from God. Souls of women, children, sickness of the body he placed upon people where God made them in his image to be like him. And the church is given the rightful legal rights by the Bible to take the Holy Spirit and enforce this upon them. I don't know what the devil has stolen from you this morning. But this is the time to tell the devil, bring back. Don't, don't negotiate with the enemy. Tell the devil, bring back my health. Bring back my joy. Some of you cannot even say amen to church. David one time said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. If you cannot rejoice here, what is your problem? This is the best place where we must rejoice. Let me tell you, church of the living God, restoration is hoovering all over the building. It is your legal right to claim every redemptive blessing that Christ died for. God has got an army. An army is rising to break every chain. Brother Evans, if you read the message, the restoration of the bright tree. Brother Evans drove 1,500 miles to Jeffersonville to go and attend the meetings. While he was in the service, they stole his truck. And Brother Branham said to the brothers, let us go. It is our legal right yes, to claim back what the devil has stolen from our brother. Amen. They went down on their knees. Before they could finish praying, Brother Branham says, brothers, let us all stand. They did not have to say amen. They had to bypass the protocol. Amen. And Brother Branham says, wait, I see, I see a vision. Brother Evans, your truck. You know what happened, Brother Brenham says the Holy Ghost went and pricked the heart of a thief. And the thief applied the brakes and stopped and left the car like that. And Brother Brenham said to Brother Evans, go get your car. It is in such and such a street. Restoration. One of my favorite stories, you know it. Brother Ezra. Brother Brenham speaks about a boy called Oscar. Oscar lost his two ponies. They were digested by a wolf and released as down. But what did Oscar do? Oscar went to Brother Brenham one time and said, Brother Brenham, how are you? And Brother Oscar said to Brother Brenham, I'm not fine. He said, Oscar, what's wrong? He says, no man, I have lost my two ponies. And then Brother Brenham said to Oscar, I am so sorry that you've lost your two ponies. And then Oscar looked to Brother Brenham and said, you said all things are possible. So I want my ponies back. No, 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 no. Oscar, let, let's see. I thought you said that your ponies were eaten by a wolf, digested and released. Then he said, but you said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. So I'm taking no for an answer. I want my ponies back. And Brother Brenham went into a vision. He said, Oscar, go to the snow. Tomorrow morning at 2 o'clock, you will find your ponies there. But remember what Oscar said. Oscar never said, I want new set of ponies. Because Oscar believed in restoration. And Oscar knew that his ponies had got scars on the side. And he went to the snow. And when he went to the snow, before he can rejoice and allulate, he checked the ponies. And when he examined the ponies, he find the scars. And Oscar clapped his hands. 
enter Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forevermore Oscar said all things are possible he is a restoring God Joel chapter 2 25 and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which I send among you I love verse 26 look at it and he shall eat in plenty don't stumble it's the Bible and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God have dealt wondrously with you and my people shall not be ashamed God is not leaving us as orphans here he is restoring everything that the devil has stolen you will eat in plenty you will never lack if you're not saying amen you will still lack i am telling you now you will never lack you will never be ashamed we are on the helm of restoration the bible says that i will restore it's a personal pronoun brother simple your job is not to restore but look your job is not to restore the bible says i I, I Jehovah Rapha, I Jehovah Shama, I Jehovah Tsikenu, I will restore. Receive your restoration. Amen. And when he restores, he does not do a quarter restoration. He does not do a half restoration. He restores all the years. Hallelujah. Save the devil and notice. Whatever is mine is coming back. You can put on your dancing shoes. Hey, hey, hey. You can start to rejoice now. Because whatever you lost, it's coming back. Your health is coming back. Whatever the devil has stole is coming back. We will eat in plenty. Hallelujah. It is not the order of God that a believer should always put their hands like this. A believer must always raise their hands. A believer must walk with the chest out. A believer must always be clapping his hands. Your liberty is here. Your freedom is here. Your emancipation is here. Maybe you have been in a problem or in this lockdown for too long until you think you are not free but the gospel is here to lose you and make you recover all now let's read it let's read a story called number five listen to what the brother bra bra says reminds me one time we tied an old crow up by his food scared the other crows away eating at the cornfield well that poor old crow he just called and the other crows going over cooing to him come and he couldn't fly because he was tired one day somebody come by and looked at him and said poor old fellow he's just stuffed to death so he just reached down and untied him and let him go the other crows flew over and saying come on johnny crow let's go south it's getting cold weather and that old fellow been tied so long till he still thought he was tied when he was untied he just kept walking around when he was untied he thought he was tied he had been tied for too long let me talk to a johnny crow in brook lane this morning maybe you've been tied in a problem for too long maybe you've been in a lockdown for too long johnny crow you are not tied anymore hey johnny crow you are no longer bound but you are free let me talk to a Johnny Crow this morning. You are no longer sick, but you are healed. Let me talk to a Johnny Crow. You are no longer weak, but you are strong. Let me talk to a Johnny Crow this morning. You are no longer poor, but you are rich. Oh, brother, blessing in a pandemic. Yes, in a pandemic. We are not controlled by the economy of South Africa. We are controlled by a higher economy. If the economy of South Africa is failing, God will send our ravens. Yeah. 
Don't be a Johnny Crow. In the Old Testament, before the year of Jubilee, you might have sold your land to the creditor. And the land now belongs to the creditor. But at the hour of Jubilee, when the priest came and blew the trumpet, the Bible says the land shall not be sold forever. Amen. I want the devil to hear this. Whatever that you have taken, you cannot take it forever. There comes a time when a preacher comes behind the pulpit and say, devil, whatever that you have taken, bring it back. It was yours from the beginning. Code number six, the prophet of God says now a man and his family could go back to their original inheritance if they could hear the jubilee at trumpet and know what it meant to them. Now if they had the priest sound the trumpet, the minister, the minister Amen. is the priest now. Amen. The olden day it was a priest, but today a minister. Amen. The trumpet is the gospel. And when they hear it, they know what it means. They know what their inheritance, no matter where they lost, how far they went back, whatever they had to do, they had the privilege to come and receive again their inheritance. The whole family could come and receive their inheritance. Amen. Let me say the enemy might have captured your inheritance, but I need men in this church that will say me and my family, we are returning back to our inheritance. Father of a family, receive this in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is the priest now? The minister. And as a minister of the gospel this morning, I am sounding the jubilee trumpet. Ho ho. If there is a squatter in your bank account, I'm playing the jubilee trumpet. If you are sick, I am blowing the jubilee trumpet. Hey, hey, say amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, freedom is knocking on your door. Amen. And I believe that when a minister is anointed of God, we can declare a start of a new season. Amen. I am declaring restoration. Amen. I am declaring a reverse order. Amen. Receive your blessing. Amen. Receive your heart's desire. Amen. Receive what you came here for. You have the privilege this morning to receive again what you have lost. I will restore. I will restore. Turn around and tell somebody, I will restore. I will restore. You might not like the way I look, but freedom is coming my way. You might not like my deodorant, but freedom is coming my way. You might not like the shape of my nose, but freedom is coming my way. Amen. Glory to God. I feel a wave of the Spirit of God. Anything can happen now. The atmosphere is right. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you barren this morning? Are you in need this morning? Restoration. Restoration. I will restore. Jehovah Jireh is in the building. Jehovah Tikani is in the building. Jehovah Rapha is in the building. Mighty God is in the building. There is a man here that can turn on the line. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. He is here now. Glory to God. Give him praise and glory in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan. The devil is a liar. We are having a revival here. And the devil must know which side we are at. We are not here to play games. This message is more powerful than an atomic bomb. Let's go a little bit further. And Rome sent their beetles over there and ate it off, quote number seven. But God is going to grow one so high 
that it can't be touched yeah. is going to come up. Amen. Hallelujah. So I am glad that when this insect attacked the bright tree, God says he is going to grow one so high Amen. until the devil Hallelujah. cannot touch it. It is already been said it shall happen. In fact, it is happening. And we are here as the bright tree, brother Ezra, proving that that tree is growing up. We are not at the stock. We are not at the foundation. Where are we at? At the capstone. Code number eight. And notice here to restore the first perfect tree in three days after its death. After th after first tree's death, he restored it in how many days? Three days. So what he calls the bright tree here, it is the Lord Jesus Christ. When he died, he was restored back to life. In how many days? Three days. Code number nine, restored it back. Now the bright tree is going to be restored in three ages. Three stages rather. Three stages. It will be restored. Now look, what is it? Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. One, two, three. So the bright tree is going to be restored in three stages. Justification, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And three is God's number of perfection. If you look in the New Testament, Romans chapter 5 was our justification scripture. Romans chapter 6 was our sanctification scripture. Romans chapter 7, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Got in a man, invisible union. And the prophet says that the perfect tree was restored in how many days? Three days. Jesus, they killed him. They buried him. And he did not even have a grave to be buried in. He borrowed the grave because all the time he is a borrower. When he was to be born, he borrowed the womb of Mary. Joseph was not involved. If Joseph was involved, there had to be what we call a sensation. Mary was not involved. God immaculately, miraculously took an egg and took a sperm, borrowed the womb of Mary, and produced himself. Is that right? One day he was in a ship, he borrowed the pulpit of Simon. And when he done preaching, he returned back the pulpit back to Simon. And when he died, he did not have a grave to be buried in. He borrowed the grave from Joseph Amathia. And Joseph Amathia felt a little bit proud to say, I borrowed the king of glory, the grave. But little did Joseph Amathia know that he is borrowing the grave for 72 hours. After 72 hours, he returned the grave back to Joseph Amathia. If you die, don't worry. If you die, believe us, you are not dying of COVID-19. You are not dying of an accident. You only die because your time is up. Don't, don't be scared because in any way, if you die, you are transported into another body better than this body. And if we bury you six feet under one particular morning, the quickening power will take you out of the grave. Then on the third day, the bright tree, the tree rose up from the dead. Then one songwriter says, then came a morning. Shadows vanished before their eyes. The stone was rolled away. For morning has come. But notice, on the third day, this is now the climax of the, my, my sermon. On the third day, two things happened in one day. Let me say that again. On the third day, two things happened in one day. In the morning of the third day, rumors went around Jerusalem that he is risen. Because Mary, the mother of James and Salom, went to the sepulchre to go and anoint the body with spices. But when they got to the sepulchre, they found a napkin rolled in a certain way. Then they knew if a napkin is rolled in that certain way according to the Jewish custom, he is not here. He has risen. Oh. And the secret of the resurrection came first to the women. Not to the brothers. Sisters say amen. 
You sisters have got a ministry. The, the, the ministry is not only for the brothers. Brother Brenham says Sister Gugu. He says a sister in her position is more powerful than a prophet in the spiritual forefront of the battle. Otherwise, if the ministry is only for me, then we must pack our bags and go. We are wasting our time. But right inside of you, my sister, you have got power. The morning rumors that he has risen. But no one has seen him. Then in the evening time, the same day, in the evening time, then he joins two brothers traveling to his house. And their eyes were shut. Not these eyes. You remember the message that we preach? Eyes of your understanding. Amen. Not these eyes. They did not know who he was. He traveled with them for seven church ages. They were all groping in darkness. Until they asked him. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Don't you know what has just happened? They did not know even who they are asking. The same one that they are looking for is right in their midst but their eyes was shut they did not know who he was but on the eighth hour the eighth day an octave higher he sits down with them and he takes the bread and brother Brian says he prayed for the bread and he said Yahweh El Shaddai Adonai and brother Branham says the way he broke the bread their eyes were opened not these eyes because these eyes were open all the time but their eyes of understanding were opened and they knew who he was and he vanished out of their sight and in the sequence of events when we see him it will be us vanishing out of his sight in the morning was a rumor in the evening time was a manifestation of the word though he restored in three st stages but in the third stage there is a mystery that is to be revealed and brother Brenham was given a ministry that consists of three pools the first pool contacts the body the second pool the spirit the third pool it contacts the soul is that right and when he was preaching in 1963 in the month of July preaching Christ the mystery of God revealed Amen. they sing a song take the name of Jesus with you Amen. hope of earth and joy of heaven Amen. and while they are singing brother Branham says did you notice the spirit pick up the same song and pick it up an octave higher octave is a note on the eighth degree Amen. and then he says that's the end of the second pool but the third pool is at hand Amen. because the third pool holds a mystery what is that mystery? The opening of the word. The king sword coming to brother Branham. You cannot give a man a king sword unless he has to reveal the son of man. Amen. Notice the morning message is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The evening message it is the revelation of the word. Code number 10 brother Alpha. The tree goes from one place to another. From one dispensation to another dispensation. From Luther, it went to Wesley. From Wesley to Pentecost. From Pentecost, it goes to the word. So there are four stages now. Done in how many stages? Three. Okay, let me say that again. There are four stages, but done in three. And that means in the last age, two things will happen. Which is taking us to Pentecost and taking us to the revealed word of the day. And by his foreknowledge, he sent us the prophet of Malachi 4. Yes. To take us to Pentecost and take us again to the revelation of the word. Yes. Two things in one age. Yes. Now, give me the next slide. The journey of a believer is in three stages. Which you are restored back to your dignity again. So you must be justified. You must be sanctified. You must be now filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, what is justification? Justification is the repentance stage. When you believe and get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You had a stony heart, 
But by repenting, God takes away your stony heart. That is justification. The second stage, sanctification, it is the cleansing stage. Where the desires of your flesh disappears, then you become a clean vessel. For you to be cleaned is that you must what? Be filled. And brother Branham, brother Luke gives us an example about a glass that is found in the chicken manure. He says justification is when you take it out and pick it out. It is no longer in the chicken manure. But the chicken manure is still in the glass. Then the next stage is sanctity is to clean the glass take to the water get some detergent to clean the whole glass out and it becomes clean and there is no other better detergent that I know of than the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ there is power in the blood the blood of Jesus Christ can clean a mess life until it is perfectly clean we can still preach mercy. Mercy did not end in 1963. Like some people are preaching. Mercy did not end when the mighty angel come down. I will preach to you the other time. It's mercy over. Mercy is not over. Mercy will be over when the bride is gone. You are the mercy seat of God. You can forgive trespasses. Ah, you didn't get that. You can forgive trespasses. The Bible says, whatever we bind on earth is bound where? Whatever we lose here is loosed where? Who has the power? Are you afraid? I'm saying, who has the power? We can still minister grace. Then the last journey is when the dove, give me the next one. The dove of God comes down into your soul. So justification was God above us. Sanctification, it is God with us. Baptism of the Holy Ghost, it is now God where? God in us. Oh glory to God. Then if it is God in us, that is now the opening of the way. The seventh seal because the seventh seal brings God back to earth. Again, which earth? This earth. Now, it is the restoration of the bright tree. Then the glass is ready for service. Then we also see in slide number four, the next slide, my brother, three stages. Justification, the message of justification was preached by Martin Luther. The message of sanctification was with Wesley. The message of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is Brother Brennan. He was a messenger of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We always say that this man, he was the one Martin Luther to say the just shall live by faith. That was his message. And this man it was sanctification. But there had to come another man to come and preach the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Who was it? Malachi 4. Amen. To turn our hearts back to the original Pentecostal fathers Amen. again. Amen. Amen. Now, the important bit, it is the baptism yes. of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Code number 11. Now, this messenger of Malachi 4 and Revelation 10 is going to do two things. One, according to Malachi 4, he will turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. Two, it's in one age, remember. It's in one day, the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the revelation of the word in the same day. Now in our day, what happens? The messenger of Malachi 4 in the same age, he does two things. One, to turn our hearts back to the Pentecostal fathers again. Two, he will reveal the mysteries of the seven thunders. In Revelation 10, which are the revelations contained in the seals, it will be this divine revealed mystery truth that literally turned the hearts of the children to the Pentecostal fathers. He is exactly so, yeah. He is doing two things in one age. Remember, when we get to our perfect tree, which was resurrected on the third day, two things happened in one day. In the morning, it was a rumor. In the evening time, the manifestation of the way. Now, from this quotation, in the morning, it was the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is the turning of our hearts. But in the evening time, there shall be light. Your heart must be turned first before the revelation of the way. And let me make a, a declaration. Many times, we jump into the Come into stages. Jump the stages and engulf ourselves with the mysteries. 
without our heart being turned. Without being filled with the Holy Ghost. If you are a new believer, don't try to understand uh, the serpent seed, seven thunders, seven seals. Repent first. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. That is the first stage. And once you are filled, then we can go away to the revelation of the word. Because God's order is that he seeks worshippers that can worship him in spirit first. Amen. Holy Ghost and in truth. The baptism of the Holy Ghost first, then truth. Because it is the Holy Ghost that will lead you into all truth. truth. Amen. And let me say, don't give me the revelation of the word without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And don't give me the baptism of the Holy Ghost without the revelation of the word. Because I want both. And the messenger of Malachi 4 starts with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then the Holy Ghost leads you into all truths. But many times we run into the mysteries and get confused. It is because we get the cart ahead of the horse. We need to get the horse ahead then it can pull the cart. We need to put the Holy Ghost ahead then it can pull us into the depth of the way. Now going a little bit backwards on the journey of salvation. You don't start with sanctification. You start with justification. You don't clean the glass up while it is still in the chicken manure. Pick the glass first. Clean it. Like maths, you cannot do algebra if you don't know your ABC. How are you going to factorize a trinomial if you don't know your vials? How are you going to do sequence and series and calculus? I can see some of you are dozing on me. Because you dodged math at school. How are you going to factorize a trinomial? How are you going to do your geometry and your trigonometry? If you don't know your ABCs. So you must have justification, sanctification, then the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when a man is sealed with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that man, Brother Philip, contains justification. That man filled with the Holy Ghost contains justification. And again, that man has the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So we need the turning of the heart, then the revelation of the word. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, then the revelation of the word must produce Jesus walking again on two feet. The baptism of the Holy Ghost and the revelation of the word must turn our heart back to the faith of the Pentecostal fathers again. We need both the dynamics and the mechanics together that the vehicle must move. If it's mechanics, 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 we are going nowhere. I'm going to preach with or without you. Many a times is Brother Brenham said, Brother Brenham said, Brother Brenham said, Brother Brenham said, said, nothing wrong, but we need action. Let me make it. We need action. The Bible says our gospel did not come unto us in word only, but in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. So you cannot come here with cancer and go back with cancer. You cannot come here with mind battles and live with mind battles. You cannot come here defeated and go back defeated. The Holy Ghost, the dynamics must get a hold of the mechanics. Then we have the results. Amen. Thank God for the mechanics, but Lord send us fire. Lord send us the power. Lord send us the dynamics to possess the mechanics. Now we look, we can go back. Mark Lakai 4, behold, I send you. Now, from today forward, you will read this scripture in a different context. The prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. No, the first part of this scripture is that our heart must be tended. Then in the evening time, it is the breaking of the bread. Watch the ministry of Brother Brenham. From 1947, he preached on the Holy Ghost. Until you cannot read a spoken word and not find Brother Brenham speaking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. His message was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then he preaches specific messages 
that were dealing with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, messages like why people are so tossed about. How can I live a victorious life? A balm in Gilead. The message why? He preached the message, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? What is the Holy Ghost? Is your life worthy of the gospel? What is the Holy Ghost given for? Then he preaches the token and when he gets to the token, he says, this is the climax of my ministry. Now all these messages were dealing with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. From 1947, he centered on the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the restoration of the gifts. But in 1963, then the ministry took a turn. Because now, it is what? The evening time. It is now the breaking of the bread. Because the Holy Ghost has dealt with him. Then the seals can be revealed. Then the hidden mean, mean, mysteries are revealed. And every believer must walk the same walk. Now, give me the next slide. Let me t take something here. Now, listen attentively. So, you ask, your journey starts with justification. You are coming to sanctification. You are now filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But you don't stop there. Amen. Are you here? Yes. You get to what? The opening of the word. A believer is not only satisfied that I am filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Pentecost are filled. But we go beyond Hallelujah. Pentecost. Yes. We come to the revelation of the word. Elijah, when he was with Elisha, he said to Elisha, remain here in Gilgal. God has sent me somewhere. And when they reached Gilgal, he said, remain here in Bethel. Justification. Until he had to ask him, what is it that I can do for you? He said, if you see me going, you will get what? Double portion. What was the double portion? But now, Oh my. If you read your Bible, Elijah, when he got to the river Jordan with the mantle of Elijah, he smote the water. Why did he smote the water? Because there was a mystery in the water. There was 12 stones. There was a portion of the word that must be revealed in the water. There were 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And there was a monument in the water that was placed by Joshua. Hey. So, Elisha was not happy with the, bubble, the double portion, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He wanted something deeper. That's why I am not happy with signs and wonders. Because in the beginning was not signs and wonders. But in the beginning was what? And the word will defeat Satan anytime, anywhere, under any condition. Yes, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That in 1933, when Brother Brenham was at the Ohio River, baptizing the 17th person, the pillar of fire came down. Amen. And the voice spoke out of the pillar of fire and said, as John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ, your message will forerun what? The second coming. Not the personality now, but the message. Not the person of William Brenham, but the message that William Brenham preaches. Let me tell you, maybe you're a visitor here. We are not here to promote William Brenham. William Brenham was a man, he had mistakes. But God, throughout the ages, he has been using a man. When God wanted to deliver the children of Israel, he said, I will deliver you with a mighty hand. And what did they see? Did they see a mighty hand stretching out from heaven? They saw Moses. I will send you Elijah. Until, until parents named everybody their child Elijah. Hey. Then God blinded their eyes. Then around 5 o'clock in 1909, the star crossed Amen. and a little boy was born in a little old cabin yes. and the pillar of fire hanged over that little old cabin yes. and brother Brenham says my parents were making um combo tea yes. a moonshine makers yes. but God visited him at the age of seven Amen. he said don't drink yes. don't smoke yes. don't defile your body I've got a ministry for you Amen. what was his ministry 
the second coming of Christ. And Brother Brennan wanted to know, how do I execute this message? Then he told him, go to Mishawaka. And Brother Brennan, remember he was a Baptist. I'll preach it that next time. There are a lot of message Baptists in this message. You know, Brother Brennan says a Baptist, when they sing, they sing like some books like this. My faith looks up to thee. No joy, nothing. Dead. Anything without emotion is dead. Oh, I see you don't like that. I'll preach it next, I'll preach it next week. Message Baptist. Formal, cold and starchy. No clapping of hands. I am sorry if you don't like shouting, you're in the wrong church. Our joy is here. And not on signs and wonders, but upon the revealed word of our day. But the reason and the purpose of him to be born was not to preach, was to preach not a Baptist message, but to preach the message of the how. So God took him, listen, to Mishawaka. When he got to Mishawaka, he found some holy rollers. People that are full and drunk of the Holy Ghost. Then Brother Brenham went home and said to his wife, I have found it. Went to his mother, he said, I have found it. Went to the mother-in-law and said, I have found it. And the mother-in-law said, I won't let you take my daughter to such kind of trash. I won't allow my daughter to go to those holy rollers. And God was not happy because it was contrary to Malachi 4. And when the prophet listened, because Brother Brenham listened to the mother-in-law, yes. instead of listening to God, says, I will not go to those holy rollers. Then God's word was raised. And the flood came all over Jeffersonville. And during that time, the wife died. Because of disobedience. And the daughter Sharon Rose died. Brother Brenham saw Sister Hope leave the body. And Brother Brenham shakes Sister Hope and says, talk to me. And God allowed Sister Hope to come back to life. And Sister Hope said, Billy, we should have never listened to, our mother, to my mother. But I want you to make me a promise that you will preach this message of the Holy Ghost until you die. Amen. And Billy answered, I will preach the baptism of the Holy Ghost until I die. And that's what he did until he left the sea. I said to my mother when she was dying before she did I said mother when I become a Christian as a boy I begin to seek and find out I know there was a God from visions that you know and the things that happen all down through life I said then I found out the Catholic Church said we are the church don't make any difference what the Bible says we believe that to be all right but we are the church what we say God binds in heaven and so then they do it this way that's one body the Lutheran said they are wrong. We believe it this way. So everybody is right. The Baptists say they are all wrong. We believe it this way. And there is hundreds of those bodies. Why? How, would you, how could you ever have faith which one of them is right? There is one thing right. Amongst many denominations, there is one that is right. I didn't know it then. I said, mother, I went back to the Bible. I like that, brother. Luke. I went back where? To the Bible and find out the, those first apostles what kind of a church they had how they taught the things and they did I did exactly the way they did it the Bible the way the Bible said it I got the same results amen excuse the expression but the proof of the pudding is in the eating thereof <laughs> that's right got the same results that they got how did he got the same results he said i went back to the bible and watched how did the apostles did in the first church and that's malachi force message and he said i did exactly the same as they did and i got the same results and today in brooklyn what are we going to do back to the bible do what they did get the same results Hallelujah. Amen. Until when somebody walks in a wheelchair here, we are having a jubilee before the service starts. Amen. 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 
knowing that you're not going back with your wheelchair. We are not going to give you holy water or anoint you with oil. By the preaching of the word, the pillar of fire will be moving from bench to bench until you rise up from your wheelchair. The same results. Cancer must drop off. HIV must drop off. Poverty must drop off. Same results. Until if you come in line in church, you drop dead. Hey, some, of, some of you are scared. Ananea and Sapphira. Lehoma. Should, should I preach? Ananiah and Sapphira, they came to church. God blessed them. And when they were supposed to bring back to God, they agreed. Husband and wife. No, we will give this part. And like I say, without any apology, if you don't pay your tithe, you are a thief. I feel some stones coming on me. Ananiah and Sapphira did not pay their tithe. And they came. And the Bible says they came three hours late. So they don't pay their tithe. And they are three hours late. Can you imagine? And the first one to come, who was it? The husband. And the husband thought he was lying to Peter. Hey, brother. You are not lying to us. You are lying to God. You are lying to the Holy Ghost. And they dropped in. He dropped the date. They took him one side. Then Sapphira comes with high heel shoes. <laughs> Sister, what has happened? No, you know, the brother. Hey, this gospel is an individual affair. <laughs> Sapphira lied. They said, do you know what has happened with your, with your husband? Just tell the truth. He says, no, 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 no. My husband dropped dead. I see when you're preaching like this, you don't get a lot of amens. Be, be. <laughs> All right. When you tell message believers about money, either, either you tell them that they will be blessed, they will never say amen. If you tell them they are robbing God, they never say amen. I'm sorry, I'm a different kind of a breed. I will tell you the truth anyway. Don't be an Ananiah and Sapphira. Let me teach you a secret in passing. This is not part of my notes. I don't know why I'm saying this. When God has given you a job, like brother, the brother that was preaching for us on Wednesday, brother Sitole, the first thing you need to do is to thank God before anything else. That is why some of you always are broke. Because you are stealing. Let, let me leave that for another day. But that is the Pentecostal fathers again. It must be preached. When Brother Brenham started, he was propelled by this scripture of John chapter 14 verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I'm about to close. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my father. When Brother Brenham looked at that scripture, he believed that all things are possible. That a man can do greater works. Can I tell you, Brother Philip, that Jesus did works, but not greater works? Hey. <laughs> Jesus multiplied the bread that was there. Brother Brenham did not multiply the squirrels that were there. He spoke the squirrels that were not there. And you this morning, you don't need squirrels, you don't need, you don't need to raise a little dead fish. Maybe you're not even Sister Hetty, right? Let me tell you, you this morning, you, I'm talking about you. <laughs> not, not, not your next door neighbor. But you, 
you can turn situations around. And that did not end with Brother Brennan. When Elijah, as I said, was working with Elijah, what happened? He said, when you see me go, you will receive the double portion of my spirit. And the Bible says, when Elijah saw Elijah leaving, Elijah dropped the mantle. To who? To Elisha. And the Bible says, Elisha rent off his own mantle. Because when the perfect has come, that which is in part must be done away with. And what did Elisha say? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And I am saying this morning, where is the God of Brother Brennan? Otherwise, we are having a painted fire trying to warm ourselves. The God of Brother Brennan is here. The same power, the same results. Amen. Hallelujah. The same power is here. And I am saying it, and if you don't believe it, I'll believe it on my behalf. COVID-19 has got no power over me. That's the power of the spoken word. Oh, you don't watch statistics, watch the word. Don't watch the news, watch the word. The word is more powerful than the statistics. When Peter, James, and John had received power, Jesus gave them power to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to raise the dead. And I can show you where God gave that power to the church. And you know that that don't believe in divine, and you that don't believe in divine healing or miracles, show me where he took it away from the church. I can show you where God brought it into the church. Show me where he took it out. He never took it out. It's still there. The church today is in needing power. We don't need power. It's needing the faith to operate what power it has. You have had so much embalming fluid, wrong doctrines, embalming fluid pushed into you that the days of miracles is past. And some old mock with icles, the spiritual icles hanging down with 90 below zero. That church is dead. It's cold, formal and starchy. No hope at all. We need another power to help the embalming fluid, Brother Philip, to raise the temperature a little bit up. God does not need a dead church, but a living church. Hallelujah. This message is not an organization, but it is an organism. It's a living thing. It's become to such a place till the spirit of God has been grieved. And any church that denies the supernatural, it will die as sore as I'm standing on the pulpit. That's a direct quotation. This church, we believe in the supernatural. We believe in the impossible. We don't need the ordinary. This morning, read my lips. We don't need the ordinary. We need the extraordinary. We don't need the natural. We need the supernatural. We want to see what they saw in the book of Acts. We have a right until we see it in our life. Get the Holy Ghost and get the results. Hallelujah. Make your shoe ready this morning. My problem is going out. HIV AIDS is coming out. High blood pressure is going out. Poverty demon is going out. The power is in the church. This is the time. Brother Sipo, where you need a brother or a sister with enough faith to say, I won't bury this person until I lay hands on them to resurrect. Can I say that again? We need a brother with so much faith that somebody is dead and you refuse to bury them and say, I'm going to lay hands on this brother. He will resurrect. And somebody say, what if it doesn't happen? I'll go on record that I believe in the resurrection of the dead. And, and if, somebody says, if, what if it happens? You are quick to rush people to the mutuary. Have you tried it? <laughs> you see, some of these things we think we believe them, but we don't. I want to challenge you in this trying hour of a pandemic that things are possible. 
in the book of Acts, Peter was thrown in prison. The church, the church, the believers begin to pray. They prayed, they prayed until the angel of the Lord had the believers prayer. And the angel of the Lord went into prison and loosed the chains. Then Peter, then the angel said to Peter, let's go. And Peter said, but the gates are locked. And the angel said to Peter, keep walking. Follow me. Amen. And as they walked, they walked. Keep on walking. As a believer, don't look back. Keep on walking. Yeah. Oh, oh, brother, I can't start my business. I don't have money. Ah, keep walking. Yeah. Hey, my, my mother had this and such and such a disease. Keep walking. Yeah. And when they got to that door where the gates were locked, the angel of the Lord, the supernatural element, went into those locks. And they passed. How is your job coming? How is your breakthrough coming? How is your child coming? The angel of the Lord is in the building to say, keep walking. Keep walking. Stay with the message of the hour. Oh, oh, brother, I don't have the keys. Keep walking. The more you walk, the more you possess. Ah, the more you walk, the more you possess. If you don't walk, you don't possess. Believer, keep walking. Footsteps means possession. In Acts chapter 9, there was a sister who died, whose name was Tavita. Tavita called Dorcas. They went and called Peter and they said, this sister was a sister of good deeds. Sister, stop gossiping. Stop backbiting. Be a sister of good deeds. They called Peter to lay hands. Acts chapter 9 verse 40 but Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the body and said Tabitha arise and she opened her eyes Tabitha was dead but Peter laid hands and opened her eyes and when she saw Peter she sat up <laughs> Malachi 4 says he will turn the heart of the children back to the Pentecostal fathers again I want to challenge you today if Malachi 4 has done his job we need to see Tabitha arise your situation must arise your condition must arise you have hidden power inside of you to challenge any demon anytime under any condition the next code now you can't do anything good until you get in the spirit I want that to sink. You can't do any good thing until you get in the spirit. God can't use you. All your efforts are in vain until you first do what? In the spirit. If you sing, sing in the spirit. And some of you here when we are singing, sing in the spirit. Don't let your mouth go up like this but nothing is coming out. We don't want, a, we don't want the seventh seal singing. Let it thunder. Let it come out. If you pray, Paul said, I'll pray in the spirit. Then if there is anything that comes to me that in any good, it has to be revealed to me by the spirit and confirmed. Everything must be done in the spirit. Singing must be done in spirit. Praying must be done in spirit. Preaching must be done in spirit. And when we get the spirit, then things must happen. Let me say, our hearts have been turned. God bless you, church. Let's bow our heads. If you are here this morning and you say, I want this new birth in my life, when the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I need something different that I'm convinced that it is God. If, if you've got a desire, stand on your feet. Don't look around. Amen. Don't look around. This is a... The Holy Spirit is here. To those of you that are standing, and you that is not standing, just look around next to you if somebody is standing. If somebody is standing, the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. 
I'm not going to lay hands on you. The person seated next to you will lay hands on you. So lay hands on the person sitting, standing next to you. We are going to challenge the enemy. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. The Holy Ghost is here today brooding all over the building. Let's just take a moment in your heart. Let's be quiet. Children, don't move around. The angel of the Lord is here. Our heart has been turned this morning. We need to see the same results as they saw in the day of Pentecost. Wherever you are, start praying for the person standing next to you. You pray for somebody as I'm singing. You just do your job right there where you're seated. Pray with sincerity, pray in the spirit, pray for that person. Things are going to happen in our midst. We are not happy only with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but we are happy with the results. raise our hands all over the building in thanksgiving to him let's try this song let's say it is just a simple song hallelujah as we worship the lord and receive the way Let's sing it from the bottom of our hearts. Let's say holy, holy. Oh, the spirit of the Lord is here. Holy, holy. Oh, Oh, hallelujah, holy, oh, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Let's say holy, holy, dear Lord. Oh, holy, 
Something is happening all over the building. Let's say, Nuele, Nuele, Baba. Oh, Nuele, 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 Baba. Nuele, Ngoñama, Jesus. Si agubonga, Baba. Let's worship the Lord. Let's consecrate ourselves this morning. Oh, Nuele, Baba. Let's sing it one more time. Let's sing it for the last time. Holy, holy are you, Lord. Oh, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, 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 holy are you, Lord. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. We bless your holy name, O oh God. Thank you for turning our hearts back to the faith of the Pentecostal fathers again. Thank you, O oh God, that this message is no longer a theory. But Lord, we can move from where and come to the demonstration where the sick are being healed, where the weak are made strong, where the poor are made rich. We are saying today, O oh God, saturate us with your anointing. We don't want to be the same people that we came in. But Lord, we need more of you. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Here is a band of your people. They have raised their hands. They are thanking you for what you have done already in their lives. Thank you for restoration. Thank you, O oh God, that we have realized that we are not tied anymore like that little Johnny Crow. We have been untied and been loosed. We are free. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. We are going to sing our last worship song as we are going to ask Brother Donald to come to the fourth and wrap up in prayer. You are the mighty warrior, my mighty warrior. You are great, great in. Jehovah, 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 you are the mighty warrior, oh my, mighty warrior, you are great, you are great in the Jehovah is your name, Jehovah. Let's sing it with a meaning right now. Oh, you are the mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. You are great. Great in battle. Jehovah is your name. Let's raise our hands one more time. Let us not get tired of worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, you are the mighty
us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, our most gracious and eternal God. Yes. We acknowledge your greatness. Indeed, you are the mighty warrior, great in battle, and Jehovah is your name. Lord Father, how blessed we are just to know that we are that special group of people that Brother Branham spoke about. Yes. When he said that this message is for those that are having the prophetic insight, oh Lord. There was no way for us that we could respond to such a deeper calling except if you would have planted the seed of life in our hearts. Lord, we appreciate the message yes. of this morning just to understand that we've got that power within us to go and possess what the enemy has robbed us, oh God. Lord, where would we be if it was not because of the message of the hour? This is not only the restoration of the gifts, oh God, but this is the restoration of your children back into their original position, oh Father. Lord, if it was not because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we would have been lost, Heavenly Father God. But you yes. even went further, Lord God, to bring us the message of the hour. Mm. Something not every human being, not even one mortal person has ever thought about, Lord Jesus Christ. But because of your grace, because of your love, because of your mercy, Lord Jesus, you have sent us Malachi chapter 4 to come and reunite us back to you, O oh Father. Because we are not just any people but we are your portion oh father as the messenger said that we are the divine partakers of the divine nature of the body of Jesus Christ we thank you heavenly Lord help us that when we go out of this place we will not only say the message was good but we are going to express what we have heard when we are sick oh God we are going to possess the gate of the enemy oh Lord Lord it doesn't have to take a lot but just that spoken word as the Bible says that you have given us the key oh God that what we bind yes. on earth oh Lord will be bound in heaven oh, what we lose on earth will be lost in heaven Father God there might be people here that are sick oh God they don't know even how to approach you oh Father but today this morning at this pulpit we proclaim healing upon their bodies oh God in the name of Jesus we bind the black mamba in the name of what? Jesus we bind the spirit of stubbornness in the name of Jesus we bind the spirit of lack of faith in the name of Jesus we bind the spirit of poverty in the name of Jesus we proclaim healing upon our bodies we proclaim restoration in our finances we proclaim salvation to those that are that are lost oh god we proclaim liberty to those that are captive oh god brother Branham says it is a cast for a believer to be fearful oh god we bind fear in the name of jesus and we say satan you are loosed from these people these are the sons and daughters of god yes. we have received the powerful message something bigger than what a human being can ever think about the ability to speak things into existence this was not only meant for brother branham lord Yes. this is meant for the bride oh. as much as Jesus said what I am doing right now it, you are going to do much more greater yes. and brother Branham says it is just a drop in an ocean yes. we are the generation that is bound to make the word manifest in our day it is us that when people are supposed to say they are Christians they must be pointing on us oh God please we pray father that you take away the speck of unbelief from our hearts let the word bring forth itself from the depth of our hearts oh god so that we can walk like jesus so that we can talk like jesus so that we can do things like jesus this is what the message of the hour has come to do to restore jesus christ back in flesh again Amen. in 2021 oh god amidst this corona lord it is nothing to us why because we've got you in the name of jesus christ we thank you bless our precious pastor god what a blessing he is he's just relevant to his name brother blessing to the blessing to the church to the bride and large we pray that you also bless the laity all the office bearers in the name of jesus christ and all of us as we'll be going home 
please grant us our traveling grace, O oh God. And when we'll be coming back to the meeting, O oh God, please give us that zeal to come so that we can go and grow in the faith. In Jesus Christ, mention a blessed name. We give you all the honor and glory unto you because you deserve them, Lord. You are the mighty warrior, yes. great in battle. Brother Branham says, you are the matchless one. And indeed, there's nobody can ever take your place. Yes. You are the lily of the valley. Yes. You are the bright morning star. Hallelujah. You are the rose of Sharon. Glory you are he who was and is. And oh, is. hallelujah. Glory we thank God. you, Father. Bless in the name, name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord.